In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 10, Section 3, No Calculator. We are on the start of the grid in, so we know the difficulty level will reset. We're on question 16. T equals 5C plus 12F. A manufacturer shipped units of a certain product to two locations. The equation above shows the total shipping cost, T in dollars, for shipping C units to the closer location and shipping F units to the farther location. If the total shipping cost was 47,000 and 3,000 units were shipped to the farther location, how many units were shipped to the closer location? So we just have to solve it, pay attention to the information. So T is the total, and we're told the total is 47,000. So that's the total amount for both of the destinations. And we want to solve for the closer, and we're given 3,000 units were shipped to the farther. And so that's going to be 12 times 3,000. This is the uh, farther plus 5C. We just have to solve for C. So 12 times 3 is 36. So that's going to be 36,000. And then we subtract from both sides. That is going to be 11,000. And equals 5C. So just be careful with arithmetic. I know it's no calculator. So I know that 5 times 2,000 would be that would be 10,000 and then one more thousand would be another 200. So the answer here is 2200. So just be careful with your arithmetic. All right, question 17. The absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 5. If a and b are solutions to the equation above, what's the value of the absolute value of a minus b? So absolute value, think about the operation is always done first. What are the two values that the operation could yield to make this a true statement. So we know that it could be 5, but also negative 5, right? Because negative 5 absolute value is 5. And so think about the operation inside 2x plus 1 could equal 5. That's a solution. Or 2x plus 1 could equal negative 5. Those are the two solutions. So we just solve. So 2x equals 4. So x equals 2. That's a solution. And then we have 2x equals negative 6, so x equals negative 3. So these are the two solutions, a and b. And some students say, well, you know, which one is which? It doesn't matter. In either order, it's going to yield the same result. So if we went 2, I mean, that's going to be minus a negative 3, so that's going to be plus 3. All right, that's 5. You could switch it around and do negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, but absolute value is still 5. So either way, the answer is 5. All right, 18, Juan purchased an antique that had a value of $200 at the time of purchase. Each year, the value of the antique is estimated to increase 10% over its value the previous year. The estimated value of the antique in dollars T years after the purchase can be represented by the equation 200A, where A is a constant. What is A? And so think about if you're familiar with the concept of exponential growth and decay, it's really testing the same principle here. So we think about the starting value, this would be like a P in that formula is 200. And how do you represent an increase of 10%? Okay, so it's, it's going to be plus 0.1, but you've got to start with the, the starting value. So it's just going to be 200. If we were doing absolute value, right, the formula would be the principle. One, this is the original value. If it's an increase, it's going to be plus the rate. If it's a decrease, it'll be minus three. This is plus because it's an increase. And so increase is 10% every year. It's going to be 1.1. So that's the first year. It'd be $220. But then we want two years, all right? And they're not asking us to find the, the, the end result. But you should recognize it's going to be, think about the absolute value or the, um, sorry, we did absolute value in the last problem. Uh, think about the exponential growth formula. This is the rate, but then you have the r times the number. If this is an annual rate, r has to be the rate in how many years. And so it would really just be 1.1 squared because it's two times. And again, this is no calculator, but you should just, just do the arithmetic here. It's basically 1.1 times 1.1, which is 1.21, right? So that's the answer. That would, would be inside the brackets if we're an absolute value. <laughs> I keep saying absolute value, but it's uh, exponential growth. All right, last two problems. We're going to do all five in this video. Number 19, tx plus 3y equals 1,200. 3x plus 2, 2y equals 1,300. Based on the system equation, what's the value of 5x plus 5y? This is a surprisingly easy problem because they're not asking us to find the solutions. They're just asking for a quantity, but you should recognize if you just add the two together, you get what we're solving for. We just add the two together, 5x 
5y, we just add the two constants together, and it's 2,500. So that's a really straightforward question. I was kind of surprised it was number 19. All right, last question, number 20. If u plus 2 equals 5 and u minus 2 equals 2, what's the value of this equation? So if you follow these videos, I've really tried to emphasize a, a concept that gets tested mostly in substitution. Instead of solving this some really a difficult, uh, awkward manner, you should recognize whenever you see this type of an equation, you should recognize this is the difference of perfect squares. It comes up all the time on the test and it doesn't have to be a single variable, right? It could be, let's say, uh, 4x squared minus 64. That's the difference of perfect squares. And you can always factor it. It's going to be the same factor. One's a plus, one's a minus, so they're perfect squares. So it's going to be 2x minus 8, 2x plus 8. And if you if you multiply this out, you recognize that the middle terms always cancel out, right? You get a 4x squared, you get a plus 16x minus 16x, those will cancel out, and then you're going to minus 64. This is the exact same thing, two perfect squares. So right away, whenever you see this, I want you to factor that. It's going to be u plus t, u minus t, right? Okay, we're just going to factor that. And then we've also got another u minus t, right? This is what I factored. And then we have another u minus t. So look above. How does this help us? Well, they're giving us the value of u plus t. That's 5 right here. And u minus t, they're giving us the value of each of these, so we just substitute 2. So again, a pretty easy question if you recognize that concept. We just multiply this out. It's going to be 5 times 4, and so the answer is 20.